Hey, this is Roman Channels Off 4, and this is part of my Bible study. This is chapter 24, or Genesis. And let me give you the recap. Uh, this is going to be finding a wife for Isaac. The servant of Abraham will take on a quest. He will go to a well and meet Rebecca. Now, for the notes. And this chapter is the ending of the Abraham and Sarah story. What you need to understand for this chapter is that finding a wife for a son, finding a son a wife, was a major obligation in the ancient in ancient cultures. So in ancient cultures and ancient societies, the most important thing you could do was continue your family line. Because you want your family name to continue on. This chapter can be seen as its own story and takes its influence from Deuteronomy. That means that this was either first spoken or first written after Deuteronomy was known. Either known, either well known to the culture at large, so that way this story could make sense to people, or at least well known to the author of this chapter. The theme here is against intermarriage, uh, but here a people or race is not about skin color, but about faith, culture, and tradition. And this practice of being against intermarriage is about keeping the promise. So for them, a people or a race is not skin color. Okay, This is not what makes you a race. To them, it's your faith, what God you believe in, uh, what practices you believe in, what traditions you practice. That is what matters to them, is tradition and faith. If your tradition and faith are the same, then you're brought into the group and you become one of them. So they don't care about skin color at this time. They don't care about eye color or hair color, but they care about is furthering and continuing their traditions. This goes into the whole adoption thing, which is at this time period, an adopted son was considered more legitimate than a, than a natural heir because there was no way to guarantee that your natural heir was actually your child. They didn't have paternity test. So it was easier to know that someone was carrying on your traditions if they acted like you and did what you wanted and thought like you did. So whoever you were mentoring was more likely to be considered your child. And you'll see also through the Jewish tradition that a lot of times the youngest are the second born will be the one chosen over the firstborn, which was usually the honored position in ancient cultures. After the servant puts his hand under the thigh of uh, Abraham, which comes from the idea that children came from the thighs. I don't know what that... That, that's a, that idea exists in other cultures, by the way. It's like the heart existing in the gut. People have vivisected people at that time period. They knew where body parts were. So... I don't know if the expression just got away from people. I don't know. Anyway, so he puts his hand under his thigh and he makes and he gives an oath that he will find Isaac a wife, and he goes to uh, he goes to Haran, and he travels to the land of the Arameans, uh, possibly to Nahor, uh, between the Harbor River and the Euphrates River, and the name of the place where he goes to, Para Aram. Aram uh, means uh, the garden road, and Aram means the Arameans. So, there you go. So, Laban is, the, is depicted as greedy from the beginning, and Re Laban is Rebecca's brother. So, there's like a sign, and she kind of, um, he goes, you know, the servant says, you know, the woman who offers me water will be the one. So, she offers him water. And she does some other gestures that show him that, that she's the one that he was looking for. And it turns out that she's exactly who he was looking for because it ends up being uh, the, the niece or, yeah, the niece of Abraham. All right. But the brother is depicted as greedy because he only gets excited when he sees the, the rings and jewelry that the uh, servant puts on. Because of the situation, Rebecca is free to consent to marriage. But this is not, for those who are looking at this, like, oh, this is pre, uh, 
feminist rights or something like that. That's not what this is. Sorry. This is not equality between the sexes. That because Laban is a brother and not her father, she is given the right of consent. So even though consent is a major theme here, the story here is not her consent. The story here is that Levan is lower in status, so therefore he could not give her away in marriage. Because as soon as he saw that gold in the jewelry, he would have done it. Okay? So it wasn't about her having equal rights. It was about Levan being kind of greedy. So sorry about that. All right, so here are the questions. Why is Abraham so insistent that Isaac not go to Haran? Why does he send the servant instead? And why would, and what would returning to Haran mean to you? And what kind of qualities are you looking for in a mate, in a, a husband or wife? What are you looking for in a spouse? So, there you go. Uh, let me know. And, you know, the way that she's presented here is in a very bright light. And Rebecca will be presented later in a negative light. So it's interesting that she starts off as a very nice, very loving, very giving and generous person. So maybe that's to show later that when she's doing what she's doing is, is that she has a greater purpose involved. I don't know. But at least here she starts off as a very good person before she ends up being seen in a different light. But Rebecca is a matriarch and important. And uh, Isaac is important. So, uh, although there's not really much about him, uh, you get his story, he gets interesting, and then he moves on to the next. So, anyway, uh, that was chapter 24. See you next video.